Thank you. Okay, minutes. Oh. Nobody wants to. It always feels weird. Proof. It always feels <laughs> weird to work with my own minutes. Second. <laughs> Okay, a little, a little slow on the uptake this afternoon. Okay, anything anybody want to say about the minutes? I uh, can you hear me? Yes, Robert. Okay, I believe these are minutes for December thirteenth. Correct. And it says December one. Oh. <clears throat> Did I send the wrong ones, or just not make that change, Sharon? Uh, I, I... I'll. Unless I have the wrong ones. No, my say the first two, so I'll make that change. Okay. Um, <clears throat> on uh, President's Report Item 4, it says Trustee Pam will be out of town and unable to sign post the town council meeting. Um, I don't believe I said I couldn't sign prior to the town council meeting. That was the issue, I believe. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> on 6A5. 6A5. A for Apple. Question about what happens if patron has a dispute the question was if a patron disputes a decision. Anything else? Um, there, there were some edits to a poem, but I, you probably don't want to know that. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Not no, I have... Uh, Bob, can I, well, can I ask you all, I don't, so go back to 5B4, what, are you recommending that the wording gets changed? 5B4. <clears throat> um, Does yes. post need to change to pre? Is that the, was that? Yes. The, it, the thing about? Okay. Instead of post the TC meeting, it is prior to the town council meeting. I couldn't Great. sign before the town council Great. meeting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Good. Okay. Anything else on the minutes? Are we ready to vote to approve the minutes? So on the question of approving the minutes, Farah? Yes. Thank you. Lee? Yes. Um, Alex? Yes. Uh, Tammy? Yes. Bob? Yes. And Austin votes yes. Thank you. I went to submit my books. So, Bob, you need to mute yourself, Bob. Okay, I will try to do that. I'm not good with a phone. Thank you, Bob. That's great. So, I, I just want to take this occasion to thank Alex for all the good work she's done in taking minutes uh, for the um, for the board, the minutes have been terrific, efficiently done, and um, and generally accurate, <laughs> except when they're not. <laughs> so, thank you for that. Okay, public comment. We have one member of the public in attendance. Okay, so. In the absence of public comment, I want to make a public comment. The public comment I want to make is um, an enormous number of people worked enormously hard to provide information that the town council needed to do what the town council did, which is to carefully review and assess what would be involved in increasing the bond authorization for the um, for for the uh, renovation expansion project? People in town hall, Bob Parrott did it. Sharon herself did an enormous amount. 
to gather information. I want to thank them and all of the folks who were involved. I also want to say uh, that while I didn't always agree with uh, the arguments that were made and the information that was provided by the critics of the project, I think that the town is better off because of the active involvement of its citizens. And I thought we saw throughout this process people who tried their best to articulate their views, digest uh, a lot of information, and come to a conclusion about uh, what the town should do and be, and what role the library would play in what the town should do and be. Um, things were said, some of them I regretted having to hear, but throughout, I thought, I'm lucky to live in a town where people care and that they care about the town and that they care about the library. I will say one thing that I think it's important for all of us to say as we move forward with what we do as library trustees and we move forward on the building project is we are not just library trustees. We are not an interest group. Each one of us drives on the roads. Each one of us depends upon emergency services. Each one of us depends upon public works people being able to do what they do. Some of us have children in the schools. Some of us have had children who've gone through the schools. We are citizens of the town. And I think if any of us thought that the addition or renovation to the library would have been a net detriment to the overall, overall well-being of the town, we would have thought differently about the project. And that's what I think is true for everybody. We weren't just, you know, we got a project, you know, care. I think everybody on the board cares a lot about the well-being of the town. And that was front and center of what it is that we were about. I also want to say a special word of thanks to um, Lee Edwards and through Lee to the Capital Campaign um, Committee. Uh, we were in a very different position than we might have otherwise been because of the extraordinary success of the capital campaign. I also want to thank my good friend and compatriot, Bob Pam, who again did well beyond what he needed to do um, in the way of um, work on this project. And for Bob's important role in providing information to the town council that was absolutely essential uh, to where we came out. So uh, the library project now gets back to work. The building committee gets back to work um, in moving this project forward. And there will be more work to be done uh, between now and the time that uh, the renovation and expansion of the Jones Library uh, opens. And I guess the phrase is, there was nothing gooder than to hear some of the residents of Amherst come forward and talk about what the library meant and means to them. That was uh, an amazing tribute to our library staff and what they do every day. Okay. 
Next item. Uh, number five says amendment number two of the memorandum of, of agreement between the Don and the Jones Library. There's nothing else that we need to do about the memorandum of agreement. We will need to sign it when we are called to do that. Number six, the library director contract. So procedurally, what I'd like us to do, if it's OK with you, is I'd like someone to move that we approve the contract. And then if it's seconded, we can have a discussion of the contract. So is there a motion to approve the contract? I move that we approve the contract. OK, so I think a move and Tammy second, Lee second, somebody seconded. So uh, we've ha we have in front of us a proposed uh, contract that would run through October of 2026. So this is basically a three-year extension of the contract. Uh, Sharon has been library director for more than a decade. And in her annual evaluations uh, is typically regarded as quite successful as a library director. Uh, respected by the staff, by the board, by patrons, and by uh, people in town hall. So in the contract, I am proposing uh, certain changes from the uh, prior contract. Um, in Article 5 of the contract, uh, I'm proposing that the vacation schedule be changed. Um, in Article uh, let me just see. I may have skipped something. Hold on. The changes are indicated in red uh, in the in the contract. The dates change. In Article 5, the compensation changes, as well as the vacation. The proposal is to change the vacation days. In Article 9B, um, I am proposing that uh, the the period of time uh, linked to this termination clause be changed from six to nine months. And uh, there are other changes, as you can see, in the job description. And that's just to update the job description to make it conform to what it is that Sharon actually does. So uh, the contract is up for discussion. Is there any discussion of the contract? Yep, far. I just have one annoying comment under duties number seven. Spokesperson should be one word. <clears throat> first, first line of number seven. Second sentence. I'm sorry. I'm just not where you are. So you just got to tell me uh, this. You're in the job description. Yep. Spokesperson. Okay. Thank you. Okay, any other discussion of the contract? Alex. Um, thanks. Uh, a couple of things. So um, it looks like also in Article 2 of the contract, um, we changed that the board will give six Correct. months written notice. Yeah, yeah, rather than three. So I know in 2017, we changed to the three months because that was um, the suggestion of the HR director. Yep. Um, at the time. So I guess I'm just curious, is that the same again or what What was the? I've not had any conversation with the HR director. The impetus to doing this is 
um, that we have a library director who's been in place for more than a decade and who has performed in an exemplary way. And uh, I believe that the, because of the her service and what it is that she has shown herself capable of doing, that we should give her this a, a little bit more time. Okay. And this, I, have, I have a couple other questions. Should I keep uh Sure, keep going. Or, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so um, under um, Article 9, Section Article. B, termination by the board uh, for other than cause. Um, so obviously the change from six to nine months <clears throat> along the lines of the same reason. Um, so I I know when we reviewed this in 2017, we went from one month to six months um, and that we made that change to make it more aligned with how other town employees were treated. And I know that we were looking at um, at the time, the superintendent contract was being negotiated, so we didn't have anything to compare it to, but that's yep. obviously a year. And then the town manager's uh, contract increases with the length of time on the job. So again, I mean, it, it, it seems to me, and I'm just confirming what you've already said, so this change from the six to nine months is sort of in keeping with what we see the town practices relative to director or that type of level of position is what made that change again. Confirming my my assumptions are correct, <laughs> which it so like I, is what you said. again. I'm just going to repeat what I said to you. I yep. did not myself. Yep. So I can't confirm your assumptions. Okay. But but yeah. Okay. Um, so I guess the biggest yeah. thing of note from a board perspective on that change from the six to nine months is that there's a there's a severance package attached to that which means Correct. there's a financial <clears throat> piece to that so i guess Correct. i just want to make sure that people realize that when we go from the six to nine months that if we terminate the library director for a reason other than cause then that means we're responsible for a nine month severance package as opposed to a six month severance package so not saying Correct. we shouldn't do that it just saying it's a that's, financial decision that yeah. that's what it says. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Okay. And then I guess my only other question, and this might be for another day, this has always been in there, but in the first section of article nine, termination yep. by, by the board for cause. Um, I, I don't, I don't know the original thought process behind that language, um, but the, it, it talks about termination by the board for cause. And the second one is insubordination <laughs> by the director. And I guess I just, I don't know that oh. we have to fix it this year, but I guess I understand why that's there. But usually there's language that talks about like willful or gross misconduct, or at least like, you know, some sort of duty to engage in progressive discipline. So I'm guessing being more from Sharon's side of the table, like, you know, I personally would want language that, that didn't just have the insubordination by the director. I would want, something that has some sort of process because insubordination is I mean it's a, it's a legally defined term I don't know I just that's I would I would suggest that the PPP look at that language next year so um and see how we feel about it it's certainly different than how other libraries have it um and it it is similar but slightly different to how it's done with the superintendent so it's just something to think about in the future so just sort of my observations and I'll leave it at that mm -hmm. So just to be clear, Alex, this contract is for three years. We're not going to look at it again next year. Sorry, I misspoke. Three years. That's that's what yeah, I mean. Just, like, just want to be yeah. just want to be clear. Yep, Tammy. Yeah, I'm just curious in the job description on number seven, number um, seven. why serves as chief liaison with the Friends of the Jones Libraries crossed out? Is that something that that um, Sharon? Yeah, only because we were cleaning up the language and put it up as its own bullet point number, number three. three. Yeah, we just made it stronger. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Anything else on the contract? The answer is yes, but uh, I'd 
don't know if you can hear me. We can. Okay. Um, going back to compensation, the, yep. the number is changed. Is that her current compensation? Jerry? Yeah, that's my current compensation. Yeah. So I won't, by approving this contract, I'm not going to get another raise. Okay. Other than the 2% that, that is typically given. Um, last time this contract was renewed, um, the point was that you were dealing with uh, uh, comparative equity with uh, the school board or the school superintendent and the town manager. Um, so the question is, when you ask for or are offered 30 days of, of annual leave, is that what they are receiving? I do not know what either of them receive. So the basis for this is simply this is what you would like? No, the basis for this is what I've said, which is I'm making a proposal to the board. Yes. The proposal is because we've had a library director in place for more than a decade, because the library directors uh, sh has shown a consistent record of performance for the library that we make these changes. Now, Sharon may, may resist them, but she hasn't to me. And she may m want more, but she hasn't made that argument to me. So she hasn't resisted receiving it. <laughs> Okay, um, I'd like to ask about um, job description, major yep. duties. Yep. Um, item one, it has two things that I guess I would look for. Uh, one has to do with implementing decisions of the board, which is not listed here anywhere. And the second was uh, basically focus on patrons and town residents. I mean, that's the whole job. And nowhere is patrons shown anywhere in this listing of duties. And um, that seems to me that is a, that is a gap. Um, well, it does say, Bob, again, on the, on the second thing, mm -hmm. I, I thought it was covered when it says fosters an excellent customer service experience. Um, it is not how I would write that. I'm so afraid. here's, yeah, procedurally, <laughs> it would be really helpful. These are perfectly reasonable things. If you would frame what you want as an amendment and tell us the language, and then somebody would second the amendment, we could discuss it. Okay. Um, I will then continue on, but I will think about how to write this in as particular words. Um, well, I am I, not sure. My hope, Bob, is to vote on this today. So, if you want to, you want to propose language. I will work I mean, this on contract that in a moment. Two months. We, you know, this is something we should have done in October. So we're we're already a couple months behind, and I'm just wondering if, and I, I'm happy to help you if there's some some way I can be helpful in terms of framing what you want. So. Let's take the first one because I it was we wanted to add uh, implements decisions of the board. Is that correct? Implements decisions of the board. Yes. Okay. So let's let's just look where that might go. Um, provide, provide guidance, direction to staff, consistent plans, uh, force the teamwork, ensures that staff members is hiring. So how about we add it, Bob, right at the end, uh, where it says, has hiring and firing authority, and then include uh, implements decisions of the Board of Trustees of the Jones Library. Would that be, is that what you have in mind before works closely with the town, since that moves away from the library to the town? Bob? I'm thinking about it, so. Okay. 
Sorry, Austin, um, just for the note, where where were you inserting that? What section? Just hold on one second. Let's just. This I'm would be under major duties, item one. Thank you. Uh, I guess. <clears throat> Bob, there's another possibility. Yes. I'm sorry yes. if I may. Go so ahead. if you look at you look at number five, five is where there's a reference to the board. Participates with the board and suggests improvements, provides policy and action recommendations, alerts the board, recommends corrective action, supervises implementation of new programs and services, serves as an ex officio member. So how about not under major duties? How about uh, where it says and supervises implementation of new programs and services? How about we say and implements decisions of the board, including supervising the implementation of new programs and services? Would that do it? One could put it there. I would just say and supervises implementation. So you were proposing that we delete of new programs and services. I am not deleting anything. I am simply placing it in front of the word and supervises implementation. So it starts with implements decisions of the board and supervises implementation. Great. Of new programs and services. Yes. Okay. Bob has made a motion. Is there a second? I second. Great. Is there a discussion of the proposed um, amendment, which would be to uh, include the words implement decisions of the board prior to supervised implementation of new programs and services in number five? Oh. Farah. I, I, would, uh, I thought I understood Bob's suggestion that it was its own sentence no i am willing to have it go into that larger sentence essentially this becomes part of participates with the take board out the take planning. out the word and after the semicolon implements decisions of the board and supervises implementations of new programs and services okay it's kind of lost there, but okay. Are we ready to vote on the amendment? Any other discussion of this particular amendment? And we're going to go back to the other one that Bob talked about. What? I'm sorry. I, I'm. Uh, what? It's in section five. It's at section Line. five, two lines from the bottom of section five. It says, Thank and you. supervises implementation of new programs and services. Yep. And before that, we would add. We would drop the and. Yep. Add implement decisions of the board of trustees and supervises implementation of new programs and services. So semicolon. Implements and then and supervise implementation of programs and services. Okay. Are we ready to vote on the amendment? Farah? Yes. Thank you. Tammy. Tammy? Uh, yes. Thank you. Alex? Yeah. Thank you. Lee? Yes. And Bob? Yes. And Austin votes yes. Okay, Bob, you had another another thing yes. that you, you wanted. Major so folk major duties, number yep. one. Yep. Um there ought to be a sentence which says ensures focus on patrons and town residents. That is what we're about. So again, Bob, just to see whether we can foster teamwork uh, innovation and an exceptional customer service experience, 
you want to insert your sentence after that sentence? Well, we have to find where you are suggesting it be. Put. I'm in. I'm in number one. Yeah. Direct direct operations. I'm at three lines from the bottom. It says foster teamwork, innovation, and exceptional cu customer service experience. It then says ensures that staff members are properly trained, has hiring authority, work closely with down human resources. So if you want to add something, it might be logical to put it in to after an exceptional customer service okay. experience. All right. And that would then proceed to to ensure a focus on patrons and town residents. We have gone for five hours. Okay. Uh, that's Bob's proposed amendment. Is there a second to his amendment? One hour. Second. Okay. Is there a discussion of this amendment? Yes. Tara. Uh, why aren't we just saying why aren't we stopping at patrons? Patrons covers town residents, right? Bob? Patrons <clears throat> are patrons, whether they're town residents or, or you know, from Leverett or Pelham. We have to move, Bob. The services that we provide are multifaceted. And what we do sometimes is in the building, sometimes is out of the building. Uh, there are a large variety of services. I don't know what the definition of patrons is from your perspective. It is uh, an ESL class a patron? I don't yes. know the answer to that. So I am trying to just make sure that what we are doing makes sense. An ESL class is a patron. They're making use of the library services, right? So I'm just going to say for myself, I'm, I'm going to vote against this amendment because I believe it's already covered. An exceptional customer service experience that patrons, residents, to the extent that the library director has to serve them this names her duty as providing an exceptional customer service experience so i think it's already covered i'm not opposed to bob's sentiment but i think it's already i think it's already there uh, i'm not sure i believe that patrons are the same thing as customers well again that's perfectly fine uh i think that the uh, that the language of this job description does the work that we want it to do okay but again if the if the amendment passes it passes um if it fails and someone wants to substitute a different word for customer then then that's a different that's a different thing but we're on the amendment that you have proposed so yeah further discussion of that amendment yeah alex um yeah so Bob, I see what you're saying, and um, I'm not opposed to what you're saying, and I'm thinking maybe an alternative is to reference the mission statement Don't somewhere in the contract, me. because our mission statement talks about the Jones Library is a community hub to a diverse population of Amherst residents where books are celebrated. All members of the community can enhance their educational, cultural, lifelong learning pursuits. Like I don't know whether hearkening back to documents we've already created that sort of give the sense of of our desire for customer service is a is a way because I mean to the point about the ESL, uh, we have ESL people who are not residents, and I mean I define anyone who uses the library whether it's for ESL services as a patron, but I know I can tell you for sure that we have ESL people that are not residents um, that come from other towns, so saying resident doesn't pick up that group, which I think is what you were hoping to have so. We have an amendment that's been proposed. So we, we want to decide on that amendment. If you want to further change it, then you need to propose an amendment to the amendment, so to speak. So Bob has proposed something. 
Is there any other discussion what Bob has proposed uh, as an amendment to the number one about the, the duties? It's set up. Uh, uh, Tammy, are you? I'm yeah, I, I'm wondering if Bob would be up for a friendly amendment that said an exceptional patron experience um, yes. instead of customer, if that would cover enough. For me, what what he's saying to me is implicit in the job description, um, but uh, and I don't think these things need to be spelled out. Um, but I'm wondering if he would be um, open to instead of having an enhanced customer experience, having enhanced um, patron experience. I'd be fine with substituting patron for customer. I really don't. Well, what like happens to, think to the of... rest of what happens to the rest of what you were proposing, which was a focus on town <laughs> residents? Well, uh, it's it's not simply that that. Patrons should have a good experience. It is that, that we should focus on serving them, and and it's. Um, I'm just not sure that this is getting those words clear. But it, it's clear in in the job description about her directing the the people who serve the public all day long. Uh, this is not. It's not library language. I, I'm not going to die over this question. So I, I wanted to make sure that we were at some point saying that the purpose of the library is to serve patrons um, and that we should make that as clear and as inclusive a way of saying that as we can. Um, that is the, the major duty beyond, you know, administering an office or, or a staff. Or a building. It is really about servicing a population. Um, and so I just was uncomfortable with not having that appear somewhere uh, in this document. So again, I just wanted to see whether we can do this so that we're all clear about Bob has proposed an amendment. And the amendment's been seconded. Let's discuss and vote on the amendment. If we don't like his amendment, we can vote it down. And if anybody wants to propose another change or another amendment, they can do that. So Bob has proposed something that included the language of patrons and included Bob was a town residence. Yes. But I'm, okay. I'm not. I'm not wedded to it just saying town because, as you know. A third of our patrons come from out of town. Yep, that's why I'm going to, another reason I'm going to vote against it. So, uh, are we ready to decide on Bob's amendment? And then, if anybody wants to propose another change or more discussion of Bob's amendment? Okay, so voting on the amendment. Uh, Alex, do you have the language of the amendment? Alex, you're muted. Sorry about that. Uh, yes, I think so. I think okay. in um, major duties, section one, yep. third to last line, uh, fosters teamwork, innovation, and an exceptional customer service experience, and then insert to ensure a focus on patrons and town residents. Thank you. Bob, is that, did, I, did that capture your, your meaning? It is what I had originally written. Great. Um, I could eliminate the word town if that would help anybody. So again, what I'm going to just propose, just so that we can move this along and get clarity, is fine. let's vote on the amendment that you proposed. That's fine. And then if it passes, it passes. If it doesn't, you or anybody else can propose any other change in the language. Would that be okay? Yes. Just so we don't get lost. Okay, Farrah. No. Voting on the amendment. Farrah? No. Lee? No. Alex? No, I mean, it doesn't. Tammy? No. Bob? I'll say yes, just to move, move this along. Okay, so I vote no. So uh, 
the amendment is not adopted, is there any other proposed amendment to the to this particular jo job description? Yes. Tammy. I move that we substitute patron for customer in that line. An exceptional, An exceptional patron experience. Do you mean patron experience or you mean patron service experience? I think just our patron service experience. I would just put exceptional patron experience. Right, that's fine. So you're proposing to delete the words customer service and substitute patron. Is there a second? Yeah. Second. Lee seconds. Okay, is there a discussion? Okay, on the on the amendment, Bar. Yes. Thank you, Lee. Yes. Yeah, Alex. Yes. Tammy. Yes. Robert. Yes. And Austin votes yes. Okay. Any other things? Yes. Robert. Um, item three was described as a substitute for the uh, deleted section of seven. Um, this would suggest that the only reason for a relationship with the friends is fundraising. And that does not seem to me to be an accurate description of our relationship, nor should it be. You, are you proposing an amendment, Bob? So, um, as always, you know, I had identified the problem. I had not suggested specific words. So how about the following? May I, may I offer some words for you? Yes. Let's see whether this captures what you want. Yes. Number three, it should begin, serves as chief liaison with the friends of the, li of the Jones Library. Period. Works directly with the friends of the Jones Library system on all fundraising. So we just take the language that was deleted from number seven, put it up as the first part of... Number three. Is, and that is a good thing to say. Um, I believe there are a, a variety of ways in which we work with the friends, uh, which are not all about fundraising. No, but it, it, the proposed language would say serves as chief liaison with the friends of the Jones Library, period. That is independent of fundraising. Right. And I then, would I would accept that as a solution to the issue. Fabulous. So Austin is now proposing an amendment. The amendment is that we would add to number three. The first sentence serves with a capital S as chief liaison with the friends of the Jones Library, period. And then the rest would remain as it is. Is there a second to that amendment? Second. Thank you. Is there a discussion of that amendment? Okay, voting on that amendment. Farah. Yes. Thank you. Lee. Yes. Alex. Yes. Tammy. Yes. Robert. Yes. And Austin votes yes. Okay. Anything else on the contract? Um, I did not see where the six months had become nine months. So it's earlier. Uh, on in article number nine B. Termination by the board for other than cause. Three lines from the bottom of the page. Line does not show a change. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know what document you have. Uh, so I'm going to just say the sentence begins, further the director shall continue to receive her monthly salary and benefits, but expressly excluding the accrual of vacation time for a period of nine months after the date of termination. Okay, mine did not have that. 
Well, I apologize, but that's that's what I'm proposing. Bob might be looking at the first ver first version of the draft and not the second version that Sharon sent. Uh, let's see, there was another one. Okay. Well, um, this is your proposal, so I guess I would uh, suggest an amendment to go back to six. Great. Is there a second to Bob's amendment? Second. Okay. Is there a discussion? I would ask whether anybody else in the town of Amherst has such a provision. Alex. Um, so, Bob, I did confirm that the uh, superintendent's contract is one year. Um, Who's? The superintendent of the schools is okay. one year. Um, and I know that it's the practice. I don't know what it is currently because I didn't have time to look up the town manager, but I know the practice around the town manager contract is that as the length of time uh, in the job extends, so too does this number. So I saw the same thing, but then based on what I saw with the superintendent and the town manager, it, it's a it's a change it's a change that seems consistent with the practices of other um, departments in town. Okay, are we ready to vote on Bob's amendment? I'm um, I'm still asking a question. If that's oh, all sure. right, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, although it is the practice for the period. Uh, to be extended if people have remained in from uh, the question in the end is still has anyone ever gotten nine months of of a, of unpaid leave if if terminated well certainly the superintendent has one year and we just saw that play out. <laughs> You're talking about Morris? Yes. But if you, if you, you, I mean, the contracts are public documents, so you can yeah. literally just. Google I'm sorry. The document. No, no. Between no, I'm just now saying, and yeah. when we vote on this, I don't suspect I'm going to get to do that. I, so Bob has proposed is to substitute six months for nine months. Correct. Great. Is there a further discussion of this amendment? I want to emphasize what Alex said and what I said, which is the proposal to extend it recognizes the length of service. And this has grown with the time that she's been in her job. Alex. So, Bob, I did just look up the town manager contract. Um, so it is uh, nine months severance for the first year of the contract, 10 months during the second year of the contract, 11 months during the third year of the contract, and then 12 months the fourth year of the contract. So we have a three-year contract, and the proposal is it'd be nine months for every year. You know, it's not going to grow. Right. But that is, but just so that Bob's got that in front of him. And Bob, sure. I'm happy to send you links to the documents if you'd like. Well, that's okay. I won't be looking at it as I sit in the lobby of, of a hotel right now. To... So are we ready to vote on Bob's <laughs> ready to vote on Bob's yes. amendment? Yes. Okay, well, Farah. I... Are you can ready just... to vote? I'm sorry. Yes. Can we just repeat the language of his amendment? His amendment is simply in number nine B to say for a period of six months after the date of termination, as opposed to a period of nine months. Oh. Hmm. Okay. So are are we ready to vote? Are you are we clear about what we're doing? So Bob wants to reduce it by three months. To what it is now. Correct. To what it is in the existing contract, the contract that expired in October. Okay, are we ready to vote? Okay, Far, how do you vote on the amendment? Yes or no? No. Lee? No. Alex? No. Tammy? No. Bob? Yes. And Austin votes no. 
Okay, are we ready now to vote on the contract? Okay, on the question of approving the contract, Farah. Yes. Thank you, Lee. Yes. Alex. Yes. Thank you, Tammy. Yes. Bob. Yes. Thank you, and Austin votes yes. Okay, I think that does our business for today. Again, I want to thank you for the work that you do. Thank you for helping shape that language uh, of the contract. Uh, Sharon and I will find it the right moment to sign it. And we look forward to three more years of um, the great work that you the great work that you do. We are we are we are lucky that we have you and grateful for the work that you do. Uh, I think this is the last time we will be together with Alex. Um, I want to say again how grateful I am for all the service that she has provided, all the great work that she um, all the great work that she she does. We will we will miss you enormously in your role as a trustee. Uh, but look forward to many, many other occasions to collaborate in uh, what Barack Obama once said, the highest office you can ever hold, and that is the office of citizen. Thank you, Alex. Alex. Thank you. We we'll miss you. We we'll yes. miss you. Good holidays, everybody. Healthy you New too. Year. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.